Hello and welcome. This is James Blanchard, Cisneros, at your service. Today I will be reading the April 11th Facebook post and making a few comments on it, and I trust that it will assist both of us on our journeys. Here we go. The battlefield within our minds. Imagine being a soldier trying to clear a hostile section of a block. You go room by room, house to house, with gun in hand, tensed up, and ready to shoot back at any perceived attack. With every person, noise, or situation that's out of the norm, your training kicks in, adrenaline flows, defenses heighten, and your attack begins. Even when we take this intensity down quite a few notches, is this not the way a great many people on this planet are living their lives? Do people not immediately judge and put up defenses against anything and anyone that does not fit into their mold of thinking or being? Is this not an exhausting way to live your life? Going into every room, every situation with judgment in hand, ready to fire at anyone and anything that does not fit into the ego's pre-programmed idea of what life should look like and how people should act, react, and interact. The start of most every battle we experience is not out there, it is within our mind. Today when the ego once again calls out for war, and it will, let us consciously pause our program response and consider giving peace a chance. Today let us work on reversing three of the eagle's fallacies. And then as we reverse them, we use them for our gain and not our loss. We reverse the illusion and experience the truth and then use the truth to help us find peace instead of war, instead of conflict. The three things we will touch on today is first, we will see that it is not what other people think, say, or do that affects us. It is how we react to what people say, think, or do that affects us. Second, instead of being reactive as the ego has programmed us to be, we're going to be proactive. And third, instead of dedic unconsciously dedicating our day to judgment and conflict, chaos, anger, stress, anxiety, instead of unconsciously dedicating our, day our days to those energies, we're going to dedicate our day to peace, to trust, to forgiveness, and see how that feels. And if it feels right, continue to do so. And if it doesn't, continue to play in the Eagles game. That's fine. Okay, number one. The Eagle has taught us that we are separate from our brothers and sisters. And so ever since we were born, other Eagle selves helped us quote unquote, create our own little Eagle self. And so our parents what they believe became part of us, what our peers believe became part of us, what our society believe became part of us, what our co-workers believe it became part of us, and so we created this little ego self to try and achieve a certain amount of peace in this confusion, in this chaos. And so if we were kind of like, like them, so to speak, then we would have more peace. And that's the wall, the ego self that we created around us. The problem lies in that there's seven other plus billion ego selves around because an individual ego selves because you see the exact number of ego selves that programmed us are not exactly like the other 700, uh, 7 billion other ego selves. We had the people that created our ego selves, helped us create our ego selves, and they have different people that help them create their own ego selves. And so whenever we versus them think, on a, think alike, whenever they think alike us or say things that we don't like, then we feel like we're under attack. And so we judge them as a form of defense. And so we create this conflict. And that's what the ego wants, it wants conflict. Because if it has conflict, then it has, we have use for this ego self because we see it as a defense against those quote-unquote attacks which the ego says they're real 
real effects on our thought system. Instead, if we remember that it is not what they think of, say, or do that affects our peace of mind, it is how we, the truth within us, reacts to them that affects our peace of mind. If we are reacting from our truth, from our, our eternal self, not from not not the ego self, but the eternal self, what is within us, not the wall. Then there is a sameness within us all. There is a oneness within us all. And so when we remember who in truth we are, the eternal in us is love. And some of its expressions are peace, kindness, compassion. When we use this, this internal self, we have no use to defend ourselves against other people's illusions. Because we, know, we remember that this is our truth, that our truth is our truth, not the illusion of us, not the ego self is not true. And so if our ego self is not true, then their ego self is not true. And so if their ego self is attacking us, we know that the truth in them is not attacking us. It is the illusion in them attacking us. Because we are only love. We have no need to judge them for just being them, for buying into their, their illusions. And so when we remember that, we remember that it's how we react to what they think of, say, or do that affects our peace of mind. And so if we see their false self as true, then we have conflict. We experience conflict and chaos. But that's how we re reacted. It had nothing really to do with them. But if we go within ourselves and use our true eternal self, love that we are, to experience them, then because we acted through our eternal self, then we have peace. Because we know that they are also simply peace. That's the truth in them. Apart from whatever illusion they believe of themselves, which is not real, the truth in them is peace. So peace has no interest in attacking peace. Love has no interest in attacking love. Two. We are going to today to be proactive instead of reactive. Because again, the ego has taught us to be reactive. This is how we have been programmed to be, to be reactive, to be defensive against seven billion people who are attacking us, be defensive. And we're being, when we're being defensive, we're using the ego, and so the ego becomes useful. And so we need the ego, and the ego survives. The ego self survives. If we're using it, it survives because we need it. If we remember the those quote-unquote attacks are illusions. They're not real, that they're not, that they're nothing. That since we have all created our, co-created our journey with Source, with God, then our journey is perfect for us and their journey is perfect for them. And so we have no need to judge them for their journey. And so we become proactive today and we decide today, I want peace instead of conflict. Instead of hiding behind the ego's walls, unconsciously doing so, as we have so, much, so often done, we're going to instead consciously remember who we truly are, the peace, the love that we truly are, and make peace and love our goal in every situation. And so before every situation, you say to yourself, peace is my goal in this interaction. Peace is my goal in interacting with my brothers and sisters. Whatever, however they want, desire to play their game, however they desire to move on their journey, is I trust that it is perfect for them, and so I have peace. I have peace because I'm not judging their journey. I trust that their journey is perfect for them, and I have peace. I have no need for conflict, no need for chaos, no need for confusion, no need to judge them, no need to be angry at them, no need to be resentful or jealous of them. They're doing their thing and I'm doing my thing. I'm trying to remember every day who in truth I am. And they're doing the best they can too to remember who in truth they are. And my journey is no better than their journey. My journey is just mine and their journey is just their, theirs. And when we remember that, when you remember that your journey is perfect because we are all one, then their journey is perfect too. And when we use the ego's little games, we use the 
the ego's walls to be reactive instead of proactive. Then we defend ourselves and we believe in the idea of separation. We believe in the idea that they can judge us and we can judge them and we're not gonna win against seven billion other illusionary uh, soldiers of the ego. You know, if seven billion people are judging you and you're judging seven billion people, conflict, chaos, confusion, result. And that's just the reactive self, not the proactive self. The proactive self reminds ourselves today that our goal is peace. And third, we're going to make a conscious decision to dedicate this day to peace. We're not going to be playing unconsciously the ego's game. We're going to consciously dedicate this day to peace and feel how that feels. Because many days we have dedicated to, unconsciously as it may be, we have dedicated to anger, resentment, jealousy, revenge. And we have unconsciously dedicated our time, energy, and focus into those energies. And that's fine, that's just how we learn how to do things. But you see, the ego is self-destructive. And so we can only play their, its game so long before we start to ask ourselves, is this really how I want to live my life? Do I really want to be in a constant state of conflict and chaos at war with my brothers and sisters just because they think like me or because they do things that I think they should not be doing or that my ego thinks that they should not be doing? Because when you're playing that game, what you're unconsciously telling yourself is that you're not worthy of peace. And again, the ego survives in judgment and conflict. So why would the ego want you to have peace? It doesn't want you to have peace because the ego's fuel is judgment, is conflict. Because if you use judgment and conflict, then you still need it. If you desire no, if you choose, consciously choose not to use that anymore, then you have no need for it. And when you do, you're telling yourself that you're worthy of peace that you're choosing to value peace more than pain, that you're choosing to value joy more than judgment, that you're making the conscious choice to value compassion more than condemnation. And so today, this third part, instead of being reactive as we have been programmed to do, and let us not judge ourselves as if we're being reactive, that's simply how the ego has programmed us to be reactive, defensive. But let us pay attention to when we're being reactive, defensive. Now let us stop that. Okay? And then say, wait, today I'm consciously dedicating to peace. And so peace is my goal in every interaction. And so peace is what I decided to experience. And how do I do this? I simply use the tool of forgiveness. Instead of when the ego says, go to war, and we've gone to war plenty of time, plenty of battles. We've already hit ourselves against dead end walls plenty of times. And when the ego calls out for war again today, and as we said in the post, it will. Let us stop. Use forgiveness. Forgive. Use trust. Trust that God's source and our brothers and sisters are co-creating the perfect journey they need to remember who they in truth they are. And so we use trust and forgiveness to bring us back to the state of peace because trust, forgiveness, peace they're all extensions of love the truth of who we are and so when we dedicate consciously our day to peace we're dedicating our, our day to love and we're letting go of the ego's games letting go of that unconscious dedication to the ego to anger, to judgment, to resentment, to jealousy and so let us do that. Let us do those three things. First, remember that it is not what people say, do, or think that affects your peace of mind. It is how you react to what they do, say, or think that affects your peace of mind. Second, let us be proactive. Let us not be reactive. That's the ego. The ego is reactive. We stop that, we become proactive, and we make peace our goal. And third, 
we, con we make a conscious decision to dedicate this day to peace. The ego unconsciously always has us dedicate our day to conflict and stress and anxiety and fear. Because as we said before, when we do that, then we ha have use for the, the walls around us, the ego self. And if we have use for them, then the ego self gets to survive. If we make the conscious decision to dedicate our day to peace, to be the love that in truth we are, to offer this love to others, we realize that others are who we are because we're all one. And so we're all love. And so other people's illusions, when they attack you through their illusions, you remember their body illusions. That's not the truth in them doing so. You remember that only the love in them is real. And the more you do this through forgiveness, through trusting that God's source is also in their corner, the more peace you have and the more gratitude you have. Because what else but gratitude could you experience when can you have for God in the day when all you're doing is experiencing peace, joy, happiness? forgiveness, compassion. Only gratitude could be your response to that. And so let us do that today. And let us see how that feels. And let us not judge ourselves when we're playing the Eagles game. You know? If we are, let's just try and catch ourselves quicker and quicker. Let us catch ourselves when we're being who in truth we're not. There's no, there's no longer a need for us to be who in truth we're not. There's no longer to I need to play the Eagles games. There's no longer a need for being in constant battles and wars with our brothers and sisters. And because we're all one, there's no need to be in a constant battle and wars with our, when we say our sisters and brothers, they're really us. So when we don't need to be in a war with them, we're saying that we don't need to be in a war with ourselves. We don't need to you know, value conflict more than peace. Let us simply be who in truth it's we are. It's seven o'clock. Thank you. Let us simply be who in truth we are today. And let us let go of the game of war, the game of conflict. We all played that game long enough. And let us simply offer to others who in truth we are the love that we in truth we are. Thank you very much for your time. I love you very much. If you would be so kind as to like, comment, or share this video, it would help with the listing process, and it might help somebody find this video who can use the information. If you'll like to leave me a question or a, or a, a question or a comment, I would be delighted to try and offer a response. And if you can please subscribe to my YouTube videos, YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, Instagram, etc. I would love to have you in those communities. Again, thank you for your time. I love you very much, and God willing, we'll see each other tomorrow. Peace.